Hey, my name is Joshua Valentin. I am a filmmaker out of the Atlanta area, uh, and I like to play with a lot of previs content. Uh, so a couple things. I hope my hair looks like I'm a civilized person. I literally haven't cut my hair since the beginning of quarantine in 2020, uh, and I just got my first haircut in that long of a time, so I feel like a completely different person. <laughs> uh, so Cinetracer is a program that's mainly developed around Unreal Engine, which you may have heard of that if you've watched Mandalorian. Uh, they built an entire virtual world and played it on background screen using cinematography and world building ideas to make it easier instead of doing green screen operations in uh, post. Uh, the reason why this was so helpful is cinematography as an art form needs to be more than just fanciful imagination. It needs to apply to real life rules. And the best way that we can see that light is hitting us from a window in the back uh, is to be able to see it with our own eyes. So Cinetracer gives us a lot of those ideas, but in a simpler platform and lets us do virtual storyboarding. It lets us do virtual lighting plots for gaffing uh, and then set design if you are trying to get on location but don't have the time to actually be there. I had the opportunity to virtually gaff for uh, Carson out of North Dakota uh, and he was wanted to do some camera tests on the Alexa Mini LF just to see what it would be like to play more with that full frame sensor. Um, I was really excited to get involved in this process so we asked if I would be interested to do some storyboarding and lighting plotting uh, but it was funny I ended up being super involved from the pre-production all the way on to the day which I'll get into in a moment. Um, so on this particular process, I wanted to do a couple of things. I had some pre-conversations with him over Zoom uh, and some phone calls talking about what exactly the project was. Uh, and so we talked through the feel, the design, we, we got a little bit of information from the director um, as to what the story was. And then I started doing some research on Shot Deck on what the feel of the cinematography was. And then he sent me actual pictures of the location and I rebuilt them with uh, kind of some guesstimations. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. In Cinetracer, you can either use the actual measurement tools to get exact measurements of a floor plan, or if you wanna use some kind of measuring tape to see how big the room is. Uh, but a lot of times, because I've become so familiar with it for projects that don't need specifics, uh, I'll do just some general sketchups and I'll look at a ceiling tile or a chair in the area and I'll base my build perspectively because that'll usually be enough for cinematography. Uh, I had some issues with that on the day of the shoot, uh, but I'll get into that later. So again, you can either use uh, the actual measurement devices in the program and I'll usually build out a floor plan with different color codes for each of the rooms, uh, getting exact measurements and then building up the wall structures from there with either the parametric cubes that give you exact measurements uh, but sometimes I'll just throw some walls in there because I know that I'm not gonna have super high ceilings or super low ceilings. I'll have generally general size ceilings and I know that I'll have limitations for where the lighting needs to be. And after actually building out the location almost exactly with colors and props and different things in the room, uh, I sent it over to the DP and the director and hopped on a call with them. Uh, this process was really exciting because they got to actually explore the space virtually and they were very surprised to see that everything was almost like playing in a video game in a place they've already been. Uh, but what we did after that was actually play with some blocking. So we took a couple of virtual actors, moved around in the scene, and I would position them as they would want to see them in the scene. Uh, and then we would just throw up some lights and some different ideas. It was really funny to look at the limitation of what lights they had, uh, as well as the wide that they wanted to get with the, the time restrictions they had. Uh, a lot of this was a camera test to see the limitations of the camera. So I tried to give them the creative control while pushing back as a gaffer to say, it will be difficult for us to do this. So how logistically do we need to break down on the day? Uh, if they had jumped in blind, they might have gone for these wide shots first and had no time to pre-light by the time the actors got there. Um, while we were talking, we realized that we need to build out the lighting and then scale it back at the end of the day if there's time. And a little spoiler for you, there was no time, so they got their general coverage, which was what was the most important. As we got into the actual lighting of the scene, we tried out some different rigging situations such as a trust uh, built out of two combo stands and speed rail, and then booming out the lights with C-stands armed clamped to the actual speed rail. Uh, I've done this a couple of different times on different shoots, but he had never seen it actually boomed out, which meant we could pull back the lighting and make it easier to get all of our coverage with one lighting setup because you could look to the left and look to the right and there was no combo stands in sight. And we could illustrate that perfectly because the camera systems inside of 
CineTracer are amazing. It gives you focal lengths, it gives you uh, aperture, it gives you ISO, and it lets you get basically almost exact with depth of field what your image is gonna look like on the day. So we were able to look at different frames at different focal lengths and actually tell if it was gonna be useful or not useful. Uh, and then even as we were getting into the different framing, we knew we were gonna have a 35 and an 85 be the two main lenses that we used throughout the day, and maybe a 50, but their 50 was acting funky, so we were gonna use a Helios and use that as little as possible. After kind of getting our general blocking, one of the next steps that we played into is what lights do we have, where do we need to set them up, and how much time do we actually have to play with these different lighting setups? We kind of went all out and we set up, I think about eight different lights in the actual game, uh, playing with first the keys, that was the focus of the framing, and, and then we played into some of the background lights of the main wide. Uh, there was a bar on the left and he wanted some interesting color to go into the glasses, so we talked about putting some RGB lights hidden to shoot through the glass. Uh, and then on the right side, we ended up playing with these B7C bulbs so that they could be practicals within the frame. And we troubleshooted through possibly needing to put those B7Cs inside of a chandelier because we didn't know the control on the lighting, but found out on the day that you could actually dim those lights on the day, which made a huge difference because we could use those practicals in the background to motivate the light that was going onto them without it blowing out. Um, as we were going through some of the lighting, we noticed on the left side, we wanted some wrap around and just shape on the bar overall. So on the original plan, we did some RGB tubes shooting onto these chairs, barn doored off, uh, but we didn't actually end up using that on the day. Uh, but it was a fun concept to be able to play with little pockets of light in different spots. Uh, but it gave us the ability to go in with a plan, not being sure if we were gonna end up having that. Uh, and then in the far background, we wanted some light in the background because it was just black back there. And there ended up being some blue lights back there from some game machines uh, that we ended up covering with Duvetine on the day because it was a distracting to the color palette that was already going on. As well as we shot one of the Aperture Novas into a wall, bouncing some really, really orange lights, just barely enough to give us some color on the wall so it looked like there was more of those practicals in the background. Um, on the day, he almost wanted to cut it, but I pushed back a little bit to say that it would help wrap some light around the room in a much easier way than trying to stick some uh, of those Aperture bulbs far in the background. Um, we ended up bringing it to zero and then up, I think, to 3%. And that 3% just gave us enough of a color back there to, it, to where it didn't look like an empty void in the background. And then on the right side of the room, we shot a Leco with a CTO onto the right side of the wall uh, and actually did some interesting texturing because the left side had all of this beautiful textures from the glasses and the colors and the depth of the room. The right side did have some textures, but it ended up being boring in comparison. And I knew that we were gonna have some weird contrast for story if it wasn't motivated for this character to have all of this beauty behind them and then this character to have almost just a flat wall behind them. And so we shot some Venetian blinds across the wall. Uh, I wish we could have been a little bit more detailed on the day. I got some feedback from a friend saying it was a bit tight. It could have been more broad and it would have felt more natural. But I think overall, it just added the texture that we needed for it to feel a little bit more motivated uh, for some of the light that was wrapping around on their face as well as hair lighting them. Uh, and it was fun to play with all of these pieces conceptually. Uh, I remember Carson, the DP, as we were lighting in this game, he was like, I don't think any of this is gonna translate. Um, and a lot of the things in the game aren't precise, but if you understand how to actually get your frames, get your, uh, your large sources and your tight sources and your textures, uh, it translates really well once you've done it a couple of times. Uh, and even to the point where I felt like we were having too much contrast and wanted to bounce fill. Uh, and his recommendation was, let's bring up the shadows by hazing the room, which we were able to do in the game itself. And then on the day, I really was able to open my eyes how much we could get a look while also not needing to use too much fill to pull up those shadows. Now, all of that's fine and dandy, and I really, really enjoyed being able to do the pre-production on this. Uh, and honestly, I would have been fine there. Uh, but we teased at the idea that I would pop on the day because they didn't have a lot of people besides him that were familiar with lighting. Um, and so he basically brought me on a Zoom call and gave me a live feed from the camera through a, a black magic device uh, into a Google Hangouts. And so they would take that little phone around the room and use it as my eyes, and then I would see the uh, actual image through the camera. Uh, and I was on this day with a bunch of PAs who weren't as familiar with lighting. Uh, I was gaffing with them as an extension of my hands for grips, which I thought was hilarious. But honestly, one of the most fun things I've ever done. 
Uh, it was really unique because he was focusing on the key, getting the textures and the feels right. We ended up not using the truss and some different problems came up. So he needed to troubleshoot there. And I was able to work with the other PAs to really ensure that the rest of the project came together really smooth. Uh, I remember one of the things that he was worried about in the pre-process that he was the only one that knew how to set this up. So he wasn't sure if we'd have the time to actually get this broad of a lighting look together for just this fun camera test. Uh, but what I was surprised to find was that we were able to get everything done a little bit late, but again, it was a, a bunch of buddies and a camera test, so we had some flexibility. But what was most interesting was that we were able to get all of those lights set up almost exactly to what we were able to get in CineTracer, just by communicating and showing the lighting graphs that we used on the game onto the set. Uh, it was one of the more interesting experiences I've had as a gaffer, which is why I'm trying to do more work like that. Uh, but I'd encourage anybody uh, not to just work with people like me, but play with the game yourself. Uh, I'm excited to do more projects like this. So if there are different things you want to see done in CineTracer, or if you want to collaborate with me on a project and I'll make a YouTube video about it, please feel free to reach out. Uh, I've been doing some of these for fun because they're really creative projects. I've started getting brought on as a virtual gaffer and get some interesting rates going around for that. So whatever it is, I'd love to hear about the project. And if you just want some advice on how to use the program, uh, please feel free to reach out. I'm excited to make more content that is story driven filmmaking, but really advancing my skills as a cinematographer and honestly as a storyteller all around. So I'm excited for the next one.